Of course, it was October 1st, 1st, and this happened in a quiet town in Dermont in an elementary school. Of course, a grade 2 student class, Miss Dunning, had a special surprise lined up for her students, who were dressed in Halloween costumes and stuff like that, and they were having a very good Halloween party. Now, I was a kid at the time, and I believe it was around 1998 or maybe 1999. I can't honestly remember, but it was somewhere around the 90s. Miss Dunning, our teacher, had a very special surprise for us when we got some, some party food and stuff, and we were all ready for Halloween. Today, we are going to be watching a classic Halloween movie to get us in the mood since it's a party, she said. The class began to clap and cheer as they put she put the movie in. The movie we were watching was Hocus Pocus. I remember watching that movie back when I was a kid because almost in every Halloween from grade one in kindergarten, I watched Hocus Pocus and I really enjoyed the movie. I really liked it so much that my parents even bought it on DVD when it came out much later. But they had it, got it for me on VHS since I really loved the movie. Now, she put the move, the VHS and the VCR, and the movie started to play. At first, the kids were very excited, but some of the older kids in the class started to notice something was off with the movie. Now, all the colors were darker than normal, and I thought that maybe that was just this random setting that the TV had, as one of those TV trolleys that was from the AV room, and of course, teachers may have played with the brightness. That's what we fought at first. The movie Sims seems to be pretty normal, just like the Disney one, and it was pretty interesting and stuff. However, it was just really odd. Everything seemed to go normal, and I didn't see anything bad until we got a little closer to it, and that's when we see something. The setting was much more sinister and more scary than the movie they were expecting. You know, that child-friendly movie that we've always liked but I'll have to admit the, the Sanderson sisters were a bit scary re at times even when I was a young kid first seeing it but of course that was just that the movie was a much older version of the Hocus Pocus and not the family friendly version that was popular today in fact in this version the witches did not just cause any mischief or pranks but instead they used more adult tactics. Of course, each student in the class felt a chill run down their spine as they witnessed some gruesome death of some people in the movie. Of course, Miss Miss Dunning had the audacity to try and turn it off, but unfortunately she was frozen in fear. When the movie cuts to what seems to be Sphinx turning into a cat, it actually shows the transformation. Honestly, that was a little disturbing, as I never really expected them to go that far, but it was definitely something that I really had not expected from them. Of course, we do see the movie progress later on, and it seemed to be going very normal. However, one of the things that was really messed up, and of course we get to see the death of the Sanderson sisters. Instead of Winnie turning into... A stone and the two witches, Mary and Sarah, exploding. Of course, their deaths were a little bit more gruesome. And it wasn't really what we were expecting. Winifred was burned alive by a group of people who decided to burn her for being a witch. Kind of like, like Frollo did, tried to do to Ismerelda and the Hunchback of Notre Dame. Of course, Sarah, though, unfortunately, was shot down by hunters who happened to shoot a bullet a few into her shoulder, and I think twice in the skull. Mary, on the other hand, unfortunately, she was on on a vacuum and was trying to fly away to find her sisters after getting lost from people chasing her. However, someone managed to grab the vacuum cord and pulled her towards what seemed to be to be a gas station where she where she ended up dying from the impact of the explosion. It wasn't explained how that happened, but if it were to be the case, it's probably maybe because of her magic or something. That wasn't really explained. None of the main characters died, thankfully, and the ending went, but 
the ending was a little bit more gruesome than we expected. When the movie finally ended with a happy ending, Miss Dunning turned off the VCR and looked around the class. The room was filled with plottable sense of fear and dread, confusion, and even a little bit speechless. She was mortified that she had exposed her grade 2 class to something terrifying and vowed never to show them a movie like that again. Of course, she got the original Hocus Pocus movie and played that for the kids, but of course she did apologize to the kids and even sent a letter to the students after to their parents rent sometime after school to apologize for what happened and of course she didn't get fired from the school but she did apologize and explain that she did not expect that to be the case from that day forward the rumors swept around town of Dermont about the lost movie about how a grade a two class watching a darker version of the movie Hocus Pocus on Halloween. Many were skeptical, but no one could deny the strange chill that seemed to follow to which those who know the story. To this day, no one has quite even sure what that was on the VCR tape, but most agree that the kids were lucky too to have made it out with their lives and sanity. However, rumors are going around that this was originally how Disney they wanted to do but after some test audiences dances they were traumatized and even terrified at even the deaths honestly it was originally going to be pg-13 but those were just rumors on the forums that was on the early days of the internet it wasn't until then years later before hocus pocus got the sequel back in early 2022 I decided to look up and maybe see if I can figure out maybe there might be some sort of clue or explanation as to why Hocus Pocus did not have the darker fiend that it intentionally did. After some searching on the internet for at least at least four or hours because of the fact that I was doing a little bit of college work and stuff, I eventually started reading more and more as to what happened and I eventually got into to more detail as to to why the movie had to be changed to a bit more friendly and there is definitely a lot more stuff. However, I could definitely say that the script started off as a script by Mick Garris who bought the Walt by Walt Disney Pictures in 1984. Now, of course, the film's working title was Disney's Halloween House. However, it was much darker and scarier and its protagonists were all 12-year-olds. Garris and Kristner pitched the idea to Steven Spielberg's Ablin Entertainment, and Spielberg saw as Disney competitor as Ablin to the family fresh market, for mark, film market at the time, and refused to co-produce a film that with his rival. Of course, that was just that. The principal photography later on began in October 12 of 1992, and the film is set to Salem's Massachusetts, but most of it was shot around the stages of Burbank, California. However, during the daytime, the scenes were filmed in Salem and Marbend, Massachusetts. During the two weeks of filming the principal cast, production was completed on February 10, 1993. The Pioneer Village was pretty much a recreation of the early summer Salem, was used as an opening scene set in 1693. Honestly, this was just more information and I kept reading more and more of Hocus Pocus. And honestly, Lee, this was actually, actually, actually more, more over the years. And how the film was going to be more and more going on. But of course, I honestly do know for a fact that they did have plans to try to make it more scary. But unfortunately, Lee, Disney did not want to traumatize anybody else. The first version of the film, unfortunately, was scrapped. And... I have no idea what happened to it. I like to think that maybe Disney might have maybe locked it away in the original movie in the vaults. How did Miss Dunning manage to get this? That honestly makes me wonder. How did she manage to get that film? That is literally what I have to ask. I still question about this to this day, and I don't really know what the answer to that is. I still wonder what... Well, how did she manage to get it? Or if she still has it? I don't even know. I'm afraid the only thing we could do now is come up with some theories and 
Maybe one day we might be able to get this break out of the Disney vault. But if you were lucky and you managed to hit with one of the Disney executives, maybe they might give you the information you're looking for. 